Hey people of the VC, it's Andy Cloudy Milder with a music collection update. Um, all vinyl this time, and I think it's all uh, secondhand stuff. A combination of things I've bought on eBay recently, and some stuff I've had for a while that I've only really, really now just got around to listening to. So, uh, time to show. First up, I'm going to show <clears throat> a, uh, a sad tale of when blind buys go wrong. Um, you know, you pick up something, it looks interesting, you take it home, and it's bloody awful. Well, the first two kind of fall in that category. Um, the first one is uh, this. It's a self-titled album uh, by Rune Staff. I think it's 1985. So what attracted me to this was I thought the uh, uh, quick Google search and Rune Staff were in the heavy metal category. They're on... Oops. There we go. Heavy Metal Records. I know they're sure sign, you'd think. But, um, well, this is 1985, and Rune Staff are certainly not heavy metal. Certainly no uh, incarnation of heavy metal I've come across before. It's very, I guess, kind of 80s. Um, a little bit new wave sounding in places. Uh, it's uh, Joanne Syme on lead vocals but she hasn't really got a, a rock voice it's more of a uh, pop I guess well not even pop I don't know just um, yeah it was just disappointing so um, there we go one of the uh, the few uh, disappointments that I've, uh, I've had in blind bars usually generally very lucky the second uh, was a band that um, I've heard some of their earlier stuff and the earlier stuff was really good they were part of the new wave of British heavy metal movement um i think they had an album out around 81 or 82 but then their second album didn't come till 1987 and that's a dark star with uh real to real yeah i should have the alarm bells on the cover should have realized um so dark star by this stage i think they started off as a five piece but by this stage there was just three of them left now, uh, the main two guys are Dave Harrison on guitars and Rick Staines on uh, vocals. Now, those guys are brothers, so um, Rick actually chose to use the word, the name, sorry, Staines as his, uh, as his uh, I guess his stage name, but um, why you would choose Staines, I do not know. Uh, but this is more, so this is them, I'll say, five or six years later, um, I think they're trying to recapture, or well, they're trying to capture the American market. the The album's a bit more AOR. It's, it's again, it's a little bit new wavy, poppy in places, uh, and it's just really not good at all. Um, I need to get better at checking things out on YouTube before I just uh, jump in with with two feet. It's on the FM label, but uh, one to avoid for sure. Now let's go on to some good stuff. Um, uh, Bow Wow, warning from Stardust. Now Bow Wow are a Japanese band. I think this is from. Why did I put the dates on the back? And why do I never? Uh, uh, I think this is '82. It may have been '81 release, but this is '82 um, UK pressing. Well, 83, sorry, but I think it was originally 82, 83. So this is on the Heavy Metal Worldwide um, label. So Bow Wow were one of the uh, Japanese bands, that, Japanese metal bands, that uh, kind of made it over in the UK. In fact, they this was their last album they released as Bow Wow in, in the 80s. Um, they moved to London and became Bow Wow uh, instead. The songs are a mixture, if you can see the lyrics on there. They're, they're, some songs are in English, and the lyrics have uh, English and uh, Japanese. Uh, some of the songs, mainly on the B-side, are in Japanese. It always makes me laugh where all the verses are in Japanese, but then there's a one-line chorus that's, that's in English. Um, very catchy stuff. This is when it was still quite uh, raw and heavy. Great live shot um, at the back. Um, Bow Wow, yeah, just a great, great early 80s uh, metal band, really, from Japan. Crash Bang Wallop. 
who doesn't love a bit of Raven? Absolutely stoked to see this. Again, this was a, a minimum bid um, on eBay. So this is from 1982. Uh, it says on the back that uh, after running out of vinyl on Wiped Out, we still had some material. So we decided to put out this 12 inch single. Uh, so it's wiped out the uh, album. It's got uh, Crash Bang Wallop on it, a men's lib protest song. Rock Hard with um, Mark Gallagher on lead vocals. Run Them Down, which is dedicated to Italian motorists, and uh, Firepower, which was on uh, the album, Wiped Out. And this is on Neat Records. Uh, oh, uh, it's on there. Uh, completely forgot. It's on uh, purple vinyl. Now, the pressing on this was on Neat International. Can't quite see the, uh, the Neat thumb there. But the pressing for this is not good. On the... On the B side, so for uh, Run Them Down, the vinyl absolutely looks amazing. It doesn't look flawed at all. The only thing is it does look, the grooves look incredibly, incredibly uh, tight and uh, um, and thin. And it's not pressed that well. And the, the need, certainly on my record player, the needle does um, jump when it's on it. And as I say, there's no scratches at all on it, so I can only put it down to it not being a great pressing it doesn't jump all over the place it still carries on and gets past its wobble and uh and then continues to play but that's the only disappointing thing of it really but uh, absolutely great add to the uh the raven collection crash bang wallop uh, another 12 inch uh, i recently picked up my first uh sacred reich um ep the surfing nicaragua ep and this is kind of the uh live EP that went with it. This is a Sacred Reich live at the Dynamo in Eindhoven in Holland. There we are, and on here we have a couple of tracks from Surfing Nicaragua. We have Surfing Nicaragua and uh, the cover of War Pigs, but it also has Violent, Violent Solutions and Death Squad. Really uh, getting into Sacred Reich, they're a band that passed me by early doors, but uh, here we have the uh, in the sleeve, uh, this is just on the Road Racer label. Not even a chance to clean any of these up yet, which is why they're all still in the uh, original sleeves, but they'll all get swapped out before they go on the shelf. Um, got a 10 inch action, yes. Yeah, so again, I picked up this really cheap on eBay, expected it to be pretty beaten up, but it was in near mint condition. It's the uh, 10 inch. Anthrax in my world from the Persistence of Time album. So it's got in my world and keep it in the family. And I'm not going to take it out or open it up. I'm trying not to, uh, but it's, it kind of spins around that way to get at the uh, the record. Absolutely superb mint condition. Uh, so I'm stoked to be out for such a ridiculously cheap price. Um, I'll pick up anything uh, I see Anthrax generally. Because uh, I know if I don't, I'll end up kicking myself. I also picked up a couple of uh, cheap Metal Hammer uh, free uh, EPs that used to come. I used to collect Metal Hammer when I was uh, younger. I think I'd stopped collecting it by 89, 90, that's for sure. So, uh, But now I'm pretty sure I have all of the uh, hard vinyl records that uh, they released Um along with the magazine. So this has Thunderhead, Giant, Axel, Rudy Pell and Pretty Boy Floyd and this one was from 1990. As you see it has a winger, uh, Sons of Angels, which who I don't know, uh, Bad Company and Underneath What, another band I, I don't know. Um, so I've uh, not played those yet, uh, but just picked them up because they were there. Um, Moving on. I'm going to keep this to 15 minutes. If I run out of time, I will just keep it for the next update. Sabotage Gutter Ballet. Now, I've had this, I must have had this for nearly a year. I played it when I first got it. It's amazing, but then it, it's just kind of, I bought. I think I bought quite a lot of stuff around the time and just got hidden in uh, my vinyl inbox. And I pulled it out again the other day and I've played it quite a lot uh, since. So what year was this? This was... Use some reading glasses. Uh, so it was on Atlantic label. Was it 1980, 1989? 
um, came with the uh, original inner sleeve, the pictures of the band and the lyrics and uh, yeah just an absolute killer sabotage album I've not heard a bad sabotage album yet I've not heard them all I'm fairly again fairly new to uh, to sabotage so um, it's great to find stuff and, and pick it up now next up is a band that um, I avoided like the plague up until last year um, I never really listened to anything in the in the whole hair metal um, uh, bracket. I kind of avoided. I avoided in the in the 80s and in the last four or five years, we've really ramped up my collection. I've, I've avoided as well. But I started listening to some uh, last year, and there's a lot out there that's just um, took me by surprise because it's really kind of raw and uh, just really really good. Um, in my mind, I often think of things like you know, uh, ballads and. A lot of keyboardy music and almost kind of AO, AOR, I guess, um, and um, yeah, just not picked up stuff. But um, I picked up some Wrathchild, um, and this is a uh, Stack Attack. Now this is the UK Wrathchild, and even without hearing these guys, I used to kind of joke. I've got a Wrathchild America, and these the Wrathchild America and Wrathchild UK. Uh, had a spat over the name in Wrathchild 1 um, and I always kind of commented that um, you know the Wrathchild America is far better now I don't think you can really compare the two because they're completely different styles of music but check out that cover it's awesome um, and I really like them both now I've got um, most of the Wrathchild uh, UK albums now and it's it's just it's just raw it's just fun um, yeah, Stack Attack, Kick Down the Walls, Shocker, Sweet Surrender. There's almost kind of a Ramonesy edge to it. I mean, this is 1984, so this is uh, way before the, um, I guess, the MTV brand of hair metal that came much later, which is kind of what I always uh, avoided. I love this label as well, so this is on the Heavy Metal Records label. Uh, really good. And one thing I've just recently learned about as well is this whole uh, direct metal mastering thing up here. I foolishly thought that that had something to do with uh, mastering of heavy metal records, but if you look on something like Wikipedia and read about it, it's all about the uh, the type of pressing that they, uh, they use on the record. It's, very geeky, nerdy, but it, it's interesting, um, it, interesting stuff. And I learned a thing or two by just checking that out as well. Uh, but there we have uh, Stack Attack here from 1984. Um, yeah, the difference between this on heavy metal records and uh, Rune Staff is uh, a million miles. Um, comps, love a heavy metal comp. I've done a, a video on my uh, comps in the past. And this one I picked up, uh, not only has does it have a great uh, Tracklist, it also has an awesome cover. I mean, you don't get much more metal than that. Uh, so, this is Metal Concussion, and you can see there from the artist we have some Hello Rocks, Gary Moore, Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, Motorhead, Venom, Thor, Marseille, Wasted, Metallica, Accept, and uh, Jaguar. And the uh, Metallica song here is Trapped Under Ice, so it's, uh, it's absolutely killer um, uh, compilation one of the better ones I have in terms of lineup and then we have it on the bandit label I think it was a I think that was the only thing that bandit released um, was that and so they did a good job with it what can I say um, three more I want to get through these even if I go slightly over 50 but it's English dogs where legend began now, English Dogs started off as a uh, punk band, um, but by the time they released this, I think this is their second or third album, um, they become more of a thrash metal, I guess slightly crossover band, but the the vocalist, um, AD, he, he still has that kind of raw punk edge to him, and uh, I think it works on here. I mean, it's not something that I would necessarily... Um, look for that style of music everywhere but to hear something a little bit different in the thrash genre is really good so they're a uk uh, thrash band and they're on the uh, under one flag 
uh, label, which is a subsidiary of uh, Music for Nations. Uh, it's on Gatefold. It's in lovely condition. This I won this on a, an eBay auction as well. So it was, um, got it for. A, uh, it had buy it now fifty nine pounds ninety nine b, um, and I picked it up for ten quid on a, on the actual auction. But uh, lovely Gatefold there. And uh, you have the inner your thrash metal collage and uh, lyrics as well. Is there something else in here if I remember? Probably not. No. So we have English Dogs uh, UK uh, thrash band. Um, enjoyed reading about them in uh, uh, Contract in Blood, History of UK Thrash Metal. So a good book if you haven't come across that one. Um, all over the place here. So I'm going back to back to hair metal. Now this band is from um, Cardiff, in South Wales. So this is my my hometown. Although I think I probably left. I think this is what 89, 88, 89. Um, I've moved away by then. Um, I, uh, I I've got this one after. I don't think I shared this one in my Music for Nations. Um, Catalog video. So this is Music Formation 78. Although I did show the uh, the follow-up album, uh, which I think is a lot better than this one. But um, yeah, killer, <laughs> killer photos. You gotta love it now, looking back. Um, but again, it's kind of raw um, and shameless, really. I mean, excellent stuff. And the uh, Patrick Swayze. On the label. Uh, so that's Tiger Tales. Oh, it's called Young and Crazy. Um, some Dokken. Previously to this, I only had the, the live album, but I picked up a couple of Dokken albums recently. This is the the first one. The other one will be coming up soon. So this is under Lock and Key. Um, it, I'm not as massive a docking fan as many of you guys out there i think i just missed the boat and i don't really get it in terms of uh, them being the, the best band in the world or anything but it's it's listenable and i enjoy it um certainly certainly more than uh dark star but uh yeah it's in fantastic condition and um so all that track. and i will pick up more docking as i want to come across it uh, this is what, 1985, and the last one, which I think is its 30th anniversary this year, I picked this up in Birmingham last year, uh, if you remember I did a thrash metal date where I showed uh, some Believer albums and artillery, I didn't show this in, the, in, that, in that video because I hadn't listened to it and um, I uh, it didn't fit in with the, the thrash metal category, but uh, another album I think most people know, I'm again incredibly late to the party, but what a really, really good album. Um, brilliant from start to finish so skid rose uh self-titled um from 1989 which it would be been 30 years ago not bad condition small bit of ring wear but i i got it for um i think it was 7.99 or something something ridiculously cheap compared to what it goes on discogs on the atlantic label um yeah one that i'm spinning uh, quite a bit at the moment because uh, i'm just enjoying it uh, so there we have it that's uh, that's today's update we'll call it the january update um don't forget i've got a q a uh, on at the moment there'll be a link up there uh, somewhere if you uh, haven't posted a question then uh, it'd be great if you could um i'll um i'll be doing early february i'll be going through and answering those questions had some great questions so far uh, some of them really challenging, some of them uh, quite funny, because um, I'm really looking forward to doing that. As always, um, thanks for those that have subscribed. I've had um, I've had more in January than I think I've had in any other month since I've started, so thank you very much for that. I really appreciate those of you who view, so not everyone who subs views, and not everybody who views comments. And as I've mentioned just about in every video this month, the comments are uh, is, is kind of my my lifeblood here it's what i really enjoy the most about the vc so um if you are watching this and you stay till the end then um leave a comment below tell me what you like in here tell me what you don't like in here i'm happy to just uh, chat about uh, rock and metal and uh recommend some other 
uh, albums by these uh, these bands that I should check out. So, thanks for watching. Take care.